but of course, just now I would notice that we are only on Wi-Fi. Oh, there it goes. Okay, that's better. Ah, <clears throat> and here we go again. <laughs> Hi there. Welcome once again, everybody, to, as we know, is uh, tonight is Cast Iron Wednesday, September 22nd, the first day of fall. 2021 or autumn, if you prefer. Um, and as we know, a whole bunch of uh, YouTube cooking channels, and usually the smaller ones, it seems like, uh, get together on a uh, Wednesday, especially to uh, do some uh, cooking in cast iron. And that's uh, what we've been doing as well for the last year. <laughs> and I hope we've had a lot of fun doing it. I know I've had a lot of fun doing it. So uh, welcome back to everybody who uh, is kind enough to show up for these things each week. Week, like uh, William Hurt, for instance, and JD Hive 4 and Pip Gorn. Kyler Estates, hello. Flash 1499, good evening. And uh, Wandering Sen, good evening. I've seen all you folks before, and as always, welcome back. Uh, tonight, I guess, as the uh, title of the video mentions, we are going to be uh, jumping on the old pumpkin spice bandwagon because, <laughs> gee, as if there isn't enough pumpkin spice going around at this time of the year. I mean, what do we got? We've got pumpkin spice popcorn, pumpkin spice coffee, pumpkin spice spam, pumpkin spice roundup weed killer. Pretty much you name it, they are doing it in pumpkin spice. Of course, the reason why we do this is um, unlike those ugly Christmas shirts, pumpkin spice, at least in moderation, is pretty darn delicious, especially when you're doing what we're going to be doing tonight, and that is, of course, making a cake. Um, specifically, a chocolate chip pumpkin spice cake, which uh, is very easy to do. I've already started uh, a number of the ingredients. So let's get uh, things rolling, shall we? Okay, let's see if we missed anybody. Yeah, pumpkin spice crack. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised at all. <laughs> Not that I've tried it. Uh, and uh, hello, Jose Latios and uh, Richard Scott. Glad to be here. Glad to see you here. So again, thank you so much. And let's get started here. First thing second. Here we go. Oh, great. There we are. What now? Hold on. My cord is stuck somehow. There. That's a little better. Okay, now let's do this. Darn it. Trying to get close here. And it just doesn't seem to be agreeing with me on this. Of course, I don't want the sound of that to drown this out. There we go. Now we're looking a little better. There we are. Thank you, as always, for your patience, folks. So, yeah, I've been busy whisking or mixing together the dry ingredients because, as I've learned as well, it is very vitally important that you mix your dry ingredients together before adding the wet ingredients. This helps to incorporate air into the batter, and it's very, very uh, important here. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, the stand mixer is another thing I inherited from my parents, actually. My dad had this. Uh, he insisted and mom insisted that he bought this thing brand new, although it looked in used condition even when I inherited it. But as you can see, it's still working pretty good. And if, the, if it ever does go belly up, well, there are places that uh, repair uh, KitchenAid stuff. So let's get started here. And we want to do a cup each of sugar and brown sugar. This sugar. This is a half cup for the record. So two of these. No kidding. One. Two. And actually, I got to slow this down a little bit. There we go. That's pretty good. All right. So that's a cup of. Uh, Sugar. Next comes a cup of brown sugar. And 
And this is just it. I mean, making cakes from scratch is actually pretty darn easy if you're doing a very basic cake, which is pretty much what I'm doing as well. Uh, I am not at the professional baking level, so you won't be seeing me doing any wedding cakes in any time in the near future. Nonetheless, this really isn't so hard. So we've got a cup of sugar. We are mixing in a cup of brown sugar. All right, now from here we get to our uh, uh, actual wet ingredients, which would be a um, tablespoon of molasses. Yeah, I have the recipe on my website, and I have a link to it in the description of this video as well. So this should get things... Uh, started pretty nicely. Oh yeah, that's right. Can't forget. When pouring molasses, it is very important to do a tiny, tiny drop of oil. Come on, that's probably even too much. Let's empty that out a little bit. There we go. And spread that around so that the um, molasses will uh, run out more smoothly. Observe. All we need is about a tablespoon. That's probably even more than enough. Drop that in. And there we go. As you can see, the majority of the molasses has come out, and we don't have to uh, scrape it out with a spoon. So that's, that's the uh, trick there to pouring molasses. Let me just put the cover on this thing. And then after this, I got almost, yeah, almost to pull the trigger. Yeah, as I said, I was lucky enough to inherit this mixer because, yeah, I know these things can be pretty darn expensive. Unless you really have going to be using it all the time, I'm sure a uh, regular handheld mixer will do fine. All right, next in line, we've got three eggs coming up. Reach over here, and of course, I gotta be careful <coughs> cracking these eggs. No, that's one. Two. Going there. Yeah. Wipe off my hands a little bit. And next in line. How often, well, yeah, that's just it. How often are you going to use it? Yeah, there is a question. Hello, Papa Dan and Mr. Bing 70. Um, pumpkin day, pretty much, yeah, because after all, it is fall. All right, now from here comes the easy part. We mix in three quarters of a cup of softened butter, which I've already softened. Just got to be careful not to dump the uh, little bowl in. That would not be good. There we go. Now it's starting to become more liquid, isn't it? Especially when we enter, when we put in the, uh, oops, I think we can do just a wee bit more. There we go. Almost never such a thing as too much butter. Especially our next ingredient, which is actually the pumpkin puree. Careful there. This should help think, make things more liquid. 
officially now we get down to oh trouble it right now is in the other room with uh jamie chilling out for once so all that's left now is a little bit of buttermilk oh put this way over in the corner so it wouldn't spill now i'm having a little trouble reaching it come on don't spill this Shit. there we go Whew, that was close Okay, buttermilk. Now we are getting into a much more liquid batter, as you can see. A little bit of vanilla extract. And now that we've done that, we're actually going to pull away. It sounds like Catherine Hepburn. <laughs> Cute. Uh, no, I've, I've seen some of Catherine Hepburn's uh, movies, and I can understand why you're saying that. Especially if you ever saw this, his girl, Fry no, that wasn't him. Um, who did you go to Kathleen, Catherine Hepburn? Oh, right. It happened one night. That's right. The one he made with, um, oh, my God. My mind's gone completely blank. It, but it was definitely, it, no, it wasn't even it happened one night, was it? No, that was still somebody else. Who did I see with Catherine Hepburn? Oh, of course, the African Queen. How could I forget? Okay, now that we've done that, um, one last ingredient, and then we get to uh, pull out our cake pan. Don't want to either. Not sure if you heard that. We don't want to over mix either. And the last ingredient would be the chocolate chips. I can open this bag up. Oh, come on. It's always something, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. Listen to the noise this thing's going to make now with all of these uh, nice cold chocolate chips here. Yeah. All right. Let me quickly get these things out of the way. Then we will change our view. Let's stop this for a moment. Damn it. Okay, there we go. Stopping this for a moment, changing our view over a little bit as we prepare the next step. And that would be very quickly now. I've got to dig out my basting brush. And where did I put the Crisco? Where did I put the Crisco? Okay, come on. Let's Ugh. My kitchen was rearranged recently, and I'm actually having a little trouble finding a few things, unfortunately. Darn it. What? Do we keep Crisco in the fridge? On top. Oh, on top. Um, no, that's usually where I keep it. Actually, that's... oh yeah, there it is. Found it. It was on top of the fridge. Okay, now, at the same time, I don't want those chocolate chips to, um, what's the word, those chocolate chips to settle either, but now that we've done this, here comes our uh, favorite toy, which means now i got to move the microphone a little bit, boy, I'm in a cramped space, am I not, and oh, what, open the oven, uh -huh. Here we go. Thank you for waiting, folks. I know this is such an exciting view. All right. And here we are with a large cast iron 
fluted cake pan. Um, the other pan is still in the lye, but it's going to be coming out of the lye in, well, I'd say probably in about uh, the next 10 minutes or so. So right now we get to play with a uh, large uh, cake pan. In fact, you can move this view over a wee bit. So thank you. There we go. Now I have room to maneuver here. Uh, this technique, I guess I can uh, claim credit for doing this. Uh, I'm not sure if others have done so, and I have yet to actually to see, except a couple of people who were kind enough to try the rest, try this method, and so far the results have been pretty good. And that is, we simply coat the entire very hot cast iron pan. In fact, I did this only a couple of weeks ago, didn't I? That was with a chocolate cake or maybe a month or so ago. We coat the entire inside of this uh, bunt pan or fluted cake pan, whichever you prefer, with melted Crisco. Is, and this pan is so hot, it was preheating at 425 degrees, so hot that it melts right away. 425 degrees seems like a very high temperature, but this is done deliberately. What we're doing is pretty much making a cake the same way we all, we make cornbread in cast iron by preheating the pan that helps to ensure it will not stick. And that's why I got the idea for it too. Um, before I started doing this, my uh, my cakes in this uh, in a cast iron bun pan seemed to have maybe, if I was lucky, about uh, two out of three cakes were successful, which meant one out of three cakes was sticking. And I did not like that. So I got to thinking, okay, what? how else do we bake? And I realized, wait a second, we use cornbread. We make cornbread by preheating the pan. Why not try with a cake? And as, as you will hopefully see, the results have been pretty good. Actually, you did see that when we did this exact same thing, as I said, about a month ago. And I think we're about ready now. So let me... Give this a little bit, just a little quick, oops, a little closer, and I hope you heard all that. Uh, just one more quick round of batter, or in the mixer, that is. Let us move this over just a tiny bit, so that we should be able to see everything. And... There we go. Okay, now we take out the, ugh, there we go. Take out the paddle here. Gee, somebody's gonna have to lick the batter. I wonder who that's gonna be. <laughs> All right, now, here is our batter. And here comes our cake pan. What I found works pretty well yeah, where did my spatula go again? Oh, there it is. What I found works pretty well is pretty much, again, we're using the cornbread method here. You put the extra oil into the butter, mix it in. Doesn't take much mixing. That really wasn't a lot of oil. Make sure we get the sides so that there won't sticking, be much sticking. And then we just simply pour it all, oops, there we go, pour it all into the cake pan, just as is. As you can see, it did not grease and flour the pan. That's what that coating of uh, melted uh, Crisco was for. Move this over a little bit. Especially because this is going to be a very heavy cake, you know, with actual pumpkin puree, nearly a pound of it in it. Uh, we're going to have to bake this about an hour and 10 minutes. Now, here's the trick. As I said, the oven is at 425 degrees. What we will do is, um, after we get the rest of this in, once this goes into the oven, we will immediately turn the temperature down to two, no, to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And that means the oven will cool as the cake bakes. And as I said, I've had a pretty good success rate by doing this. So we just swirl that around a little bit. 
And as quickly as we can, because I really don't want to take much longer, change our point of view over a little bit to the oven gloves. hot oven, which, oh man, it is getting dirty because of the cast iron I've been seasoning. That's going to be a project this weekend. Clean the oven. And it goes. Close the door. And as I said, oh yeah, there's a good view of the uh, poiki again. Turn the uh, temperature down to 350 so that the temperature will drop. Whew. There we go. And as I said, I'm surprised we ended up with a, a nice view of this little cauldron here. Let me put this other egg. How many do I have left? A couple more eggs. Putting these back in the fridge. Be with you folks in just a second. Ugh. And that is part one of our show tonight. So far, so good. Okay. Sounds like you have bearing or lubrication issue in the transfer case. That is such a good machine. Very straightforward to remedy. Definitely not a Ferrari machine. No, I agree there. Um, I should indeed probably have this thing uh, checked out, maybe oiled, in fact, or greased anyway. So uh, 1J007ZM. I love this time of year and everything pumpkin, Joseph Ortiz. I'm on a weight loss journey, so there I will consume with my eye. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> However, there will be folks who will enjoy this cake, assuming it turns out successful. KitchenAid mixer, useful attachments, pasta rolling, slicing, shredding, di dicing, spiralizing, grinder, sausage stuffer. Yes, indeed. I have the grind. No, I have. Do I? Yes, I do. I have the grinder and the sausage stuffer. I've already enjoyed that. Not using the new cake pan from Brimfield. We are about to see the new cake pan from Brimfield. Don't worry about that, JD Hive 4. Also, do you let it sit after baking to take it out post-baking? Absolutely. What happens is when this comes out of the oven, it is going to sit in the pan for 20 minutes. I've learned that from experience. Then after 20 minutes, we will get to flip it out of the pan. So... Please repeat the temp and time for preheating the uh, cast iron cake pan. Okay, uh, Mike Olden. First of all, again, the link to the recipe is right in the description of this video, so you can get it all right there. But as I said, I preheated the uh, cake pan and the oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. And yes, I said that right, 425 Fahrenheit. Uh, that way, I took it out, coated the very, very hot pan with uh, Crisco, which immediately melted, poured the extra batter in, no, poured the extra oil into the batter, mixed it in. Then I poured the batter into the pan, put the pan into the oven, still at 425 degrees, but as soon as I closed the door, changed it, changed the oven temperature to 350 degrees. So the oven temperature is decreasing as it bakes. And with this particular uh, recipe, the pumpkin spice cake, this one's going to be about an hour and 10 minutes. So right now it's 824. So that means somewhere around maybe 930 or so. <laughs> It'll uh, come out of the oven. And the reason why it's taking so long is because, as I said, this is a very heavy cake because it has almost a pound of actual pumpkin puree in it. Uh, if I was just doing a regular cake batter, I found about 50, five, zero minutes should be enough to uh, have a uh, perfectly baked cake. Question about last week. When you took the cast iron out of the lye, did you run it through vinegar mixture to kill the lye? I missed that because I was looking up an August video. As a matter of fact, no, I did not. The reason why is that lye is actually water soluble, meaning giving the lye a good, very good rinsing under the, uh, under the, um, under good, hot, good warm to hot water is really enough to clean it off. Uh, the lye dissolves. There is not going to be any dangerous chemical residue in the uh, little cracks and pores of the and fissures of the uh, surface of the pan. And even if there is, at those very tiny microscopic amounts, lye is safe. 
I mean, lye, as we know, is actually used in the preparation of some foods. You know, we're even talking things like pretzels or bagels. Um, so at those minimal amounts, anything that, of course, hasn't already been baked, hasn't been burned on and then carbonized by uh, actually, you know, baking the seasoning on, uh, there is nothing to worry about, and I can, and I am confident in saying that lie. Actually, yes, lie can be harmful if you get it on your bare skin, and you do have to be careful. But when you are careful, lie is actually a very friendly chemical, and it's a very good one to uh, work with. Some people these days, no one here, trust me, but some people, especially on the internet, as you know, are really love spreading their scare stories about anything at all that have to do with chemicals. And that includes lying ca cast iron. I don't want to use chemicals to season my cast iron. Uh, but lie is a very, is really pretty much naturally occurring. It occurred, you know, it is uh, extracted from wood ash. Um, and they use a process to uh, purify it. And again, we've been using it for hundreds of years. So nobody's died from uh, any contamination or anything like that. So that's why I mean. Lie is, an, it, as long as you take the proper precautions, lie is safe to use. But please do take your precautions. Peg tooth. I'm a big fan of letting my expensive heat coast uh, and use up this stored heat uh, as well. Yes. <laughs> um, anyway, I hope that was your answer, Papa Dan. Now, let's get on and let's uh, have a little bit more fun. Oh, yeah. The reason why I have the poiki, and it's pronounced poiki, as I find out, it looks like it's spelled pudgy, but people from South Africa have corrected me, and it's actually pronounced poiki. Um, and let's get on and let's have some more uh, cast iron fun, and, shall we? Especially since uh, someone here has already asked, well, why aren't you using the uh, brim why aren't you using the uh, pen from Brimfield? And the reason why is because it's down here. It's in the uh, lie tank. Oh yeah, and this time I checked my uh, video, and I had Jamie's help as well. To make sure I took out the right tank so that this is not going to be empty. <laughs> um, namely, down there at the bottom of this uh, tank is, in fact, the uh, cast iron pan. And that's really what I'm about to uh, what I'm about to do. Take it out and clean it off. The uh, <laughs> sink, unfortunately, has dishes in it, including... Um, included yeah, no, no. They're the stuff from when I prepared the cake. Oh, okay. Yeah, including this thing. Mmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Somebody had to lick this. Hmm. Oh, yeah. That is going to be... Well, if you want to lick the uh, paddle... Okay. That's all right. Hmm. Yeah, that is going to be one good cake. Okay. Now, time to start trying to play it safe. I actually got a... You know, I actually... I shouldn't say burned myself, but I did get a little bit of lie on my hands last week. No, as you can see, I'm not injured or anything like that. But it was enough to cause my uh, skin to tingle or even uh, sting a little bit. That has long since been taken care of. So now, take two for this. Oh, yeah, that's right. I remember now. This one had a really fun seal. So let's take our time. Do our best not to spill this. Come on. Did it last week. Just take your time. That's all I'm doing. I'm talking to myself here, reassuring myself more than anything else. I did it before. I'll do it again. Come on. Here's the flap up. There we go. And. Now, aha, it's open now, carefully, there we go, just a little bit more, boy, this thing's stubborn, okay, I will give Home Depot credit for this lid, I mean, this thing is definitely a leak tight lid, there's no denying that, and there we are, there's our light tank, so, Nice long gloves. I'm being very careful. Let's see what we have in here. 
Uh, first up on top was this Taiwan lid. Um, I think I'll put the rest of these things back in the lie once we're done here. Also in here was... Uh, this looks vintage. Oh, yeah, that's right. This was the uh, BSR handwritten one. And, hey, this thing has actually done pretty good after a week in the lie, wouldn't you say? So, again, we will put this back in when we're done. Next up. Uh, I really did pack this thing down, didn't I? Uh, next up. Ah, uh, yes, this is the ugly number eight, which is also looks like it's doing pretty good. I mean, definitely looks like these are not going to have to take much longer here. Here, let me show this one a little closer. And as you can see, I've got, you know, I prepared this time for the mess. So, but yeah, we're doing pretty good here with this, uh, with this one, with this ugly. And from here, oh, I think I feel it. <laughs> Boy, is that a suggested term. But lo and behold, there it is. Here is our bunt pan, which is not a bunt pan. <laughs> I have to remind myself of that. All right, so I'm wondering if there might actually be a leak in this thing. I hope not. Now that that's out, let's get these things back in and then cover this nice and careful here. That's one. That's two. You know, I'm suspecting that there might actually be a leak in this glove or something. Well, I'm about to wash my hands and wash that thing off anyway. And there is number three. <sighs> now that we've done that, that would really explain a lot. Because this is the same hand that I got lie on last week. However, that's not a major catastrophe. Let's do this. Seal this good and tight. Ugh. Now I can move this over a little bit. There we go. Not too much of a spill, at least. Yeah, definitely. I'm actually thinking I may need another pair of gloves. I think this thing sprung a leak somehow. Crap. Well, as I said, I am not going to die from this. I'm just going to wash my hands right now. As I said, lye is... Come on. Lye is water-soluble. So... Let's move over to our sink full of dishes. Yes, I have a bottle right here. What? Here. What of what? Vinegar. Um, oh, you have vinegar. Oh, here. okay. Here. Yeah, actually, yeah, right there. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Vinegar. Thank you. This is this apple cider, which works the same way. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. Apple cider works fine. Is it working? Oh, it's working immediately. The okay. tingling sensation is going away right away. Okay. So thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Hi, everybody. Thank you. All right, note to myself that I'm going to have to throw out those gloves and use another one. Okay. Here. Get another pair. But okay. Thank you. You should always have that near anyways. No, you know? you're right. You're right. You are right. Okay, now from here, all we have to do though is give this a nice good scrubbing. There's no parts right there too. Get anything else. Yes. And in fact, all I need really... This is a little bit of dish soap, nothing fancy. This is good old Dawn dish soap from the dollar store. I've talked about dollar stores before. You can get some good deals at a dollar store, and that is one of them. So, scrub this out nicely. Yeah, over the next couple of days, I will definitely be seasoning this, and then we will put it through paces over the weekend. And as Jamie will tell you, I seem to say that a lot, as Jamie will tell you, I'm really looking forward to using this. I looked this up there on the, uh, there's a special secret Facebook group, especially for cast iron bunk collectors and users, and it is called Cast Iron Careful. Cast Iron Bunt Bakers Anonymous. The idea, of course, anonymous is pretty much, you know, like uh, Alcoholics Anonymous or uh, Cast Iron Anonymous. You know, essentially it's that baking is an addiction. And I know a lot of people will definitely say that. So, hence Cast Iron Bunt Bakers Anonymous. They have, uh, 
an astounding selection of these uh, cake pans and butt pans on there. And they give names, there are names assigned to all of these designs here. And it seems like what I came across was none other than the Monarch. So if anybody from that group there wants to correct me, please do so. But I understand that's what this is actually called. It's not called a, really a bunt pan, it's called the Monarch. Which now that I'm thinking of it, because I know my adult swim, makes me think of the Venture Brothers. <laughs> so, well, that's okay. There are worse villains than the Monarch. Not many, the but there are. Really, you know? What? The Monarch Butterfly. Yes, indeed, the Monarch Butterfly. <laughs> and of course, Monarch is supposed to stand for royalty anyway. There we go. So after a week in the lie, it only needed a week, probably did not even need a week, uh, because, you know, this thing was not heavily encrusted with gunk. It was uh, really only had pretty much a light coating, and looks like, you know, it doesn't even look like there's any residual rust on this now, is there? Lye does not remove rust, and I, I, by the way, I really hope I haven't been too soft. Let me, let me move the microphone a little closer. Anyways, I would say... Why does not remove rust yet? This thing here really looks like I could just as easily season it right now. So, since there's already something in the oven, what we just have to do is dry this off then and give it a coating of Crisco so that we do not get any flash rust. So, excuse me, please. Let me get my... As I said, I hope the microphone was close enough when I was describing this in that the uh, design, on, according to the Cast Iron Bunt group, the Cast Iron Bunt Bakers Anonymous, this thing, the design on this thing here, they call it the Monarch. So, hey, it's kind of rough on the inside. Well, I know it's really hard to clean these things. So um, that it kind of reminds me of what I heard people from Lodge say when they redid the uh, fluted cake pan or the bunt pan and that the thing was a real beast for them to make and that they found that they had as high as a 25% failure rate, as many as, as many as 25% of those uh, bunt pans or fluted pans never even made it off the production line because it did not meet quality standards. It was that difficult to make. So you can only imagine what it was like to uh, make these things. Yeah, to the cost oh yeah, no doubt. That's one reason why I'm sure that these bunt that these bunt pans. Let me dry this off a little bit so I can put this down here. These things here are so rare and so valuable. In fact, I can move this sure. over a little bit. You don't need this anymore. Right? right. This is with just molasses. This is not lie. <laughs> no, I am not lying. <laughs> okay. So funny. Right. Um, I got jokes. Let me move this over a little bit so you can see it. Next up, let me... Yeah, there is still some water in the cracks. That's pretty much inevitable. What I'm, Which is why the next thing I'm going to do is coat this thing with Crisco and then put it on the burner on the stovetop burner at maybe like a low to medium heat, um, which will cause the water to evaporate, but it should not, no, it will not remove the uh, Crisco, the grease that I'm putting, I'm about to put on it. So that way that will keep it from uh, collecting any flash rust, which does not seem to be happening. This thing is really well made. I'm very happy about that. Especially since seeing as all of these, you know, see all these nooks and crannies, as they love to say in those biscuit or uh, English muffin commercials. Yeah, so oh, it's... Oh, you're brown sugar right up here. I didn't even know. Huh. Oh, we do? Yeah, we do. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Anyway, we are all set with brown sugar as well. That is, Again, that cake is in the oven, and I estimate it should be done by maybe yeah. almost 9.30 or so. Just got like Five seconds in the room. Hmm. Look at this. Nice. Oh, wow, Eric. We actually have room. We got stuff off the counter tomorrow. Amazing. Oh my god. Oh, my god. You. We're gonna yeah. Do more stuff. yeah, you sound like you yeah, you know. This sounds... more stuff to put on it. 
the noises you're making, you better be careful. Hey, 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 hey. Or you'll get into Watch Facebook it. jail. Watch it. Yeah. Monetized, monetized. Yes, exactly. Monetized. I gotta be careful what I'm saying here. <laughs> All right, now. Ugh. Careful here. Buy more spices. <laughs> Oh, are you saying I need to get more spices? Yeah, because there's, there's now an empty spot. <laughs> it's at least four by four inches. <laughs> God, how many spice jars could I put in that? At least three. <laughs> Maybe four. <laughs> Single possibility. Yes, indeed. Okay. So far. So good. So anyway, the monarch. I'm looking forward to crowning the monarch with a uh, cake this weekend. I mean, I think we need another type of salt. We only have four kinds. Oh, only four kinds of only salt? four kinds of salt. Yeah. Need more salt. Does that include the rock salt? Rock salt, um, sea salt, hmm. Himalayan salt, regular salt. Kosher salt. Kosher salt. That's, that's the... That's five. That's, that's all co kosher salt and sea salt. Is the same thing. Oh, no, we don't have sea salt. Oh, oh, that's... There we go. All right. Okay, salt. Okay. Oh, Epsom so, salt? Yeah. yeah. And well, yeah, Epsom salt as well. <laughs> okay. There we go. Now that we've done this, let's once again catch up on some comments here. So appreciate all that. Strong's Adventures. Clean the gloves, then roll them up. Oh, yes. <laughs> Clean the gloves, then roll them up starting from the cuff. Works in like a plastic bag. It will tell you if there's a hole in them. We do that every time we use high-voltage gloves. I don't blame you. Good tip there, Strong. Did you make it to, Bren to Brenson? <laughs> Picked up the same cake pan last year, James Ramstell. When I saw you pick what I saw you pick that up for, wow, what it yeah. I'm that was really <sighs> I'm trying not to brag about it because it was sheer luck. That was like one of those once in a lifetime deals, which is why no matter what, I knew if I passed that thing up, I would be kicking myself forever. And I'm definitely not kicking myself. <laughs> Paw Paw Dan. Yes, sir. And back home now. Should have some videos soon. The producer editor lady had to work 15 hours her first day back to work. Yeah, I know that feeling all too well. <laughs> The new lids first have a little thing that you have to tear off all the way around the perimeter. I thought last week it looked like you had never taken that little part off. You were right. I have not taken that part off. On the other hand, I think it actually helps to seal it a little better yet. So even though it was hard to uh, get that thing off, it's worth it because, you know, I'm not spilling lye all over the place. So... I'm thinking I'm leaving it there, at least for now. The little flaps that you grab with your fingers flex better and open up. I like using a plastic tab. Hey, y'all, I'm just dropping in to say hello only for a few minutes. For the record, you put two skillets and one lid in an orange bucket. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah, no, last week's mistake, I will make sure that that was not repeated. And in fact, I watched last week's video before getting this out so that I knew I was reaching into the right bucket <laughs> to, get that, uh, cake, to get that cake pan. <laughs> All right, Strong's Adventures. Glad you made it there and back. Okay, so... We've gotten this far here. I'm actually uh, kind of like ahead of schedule here in that we've got a good 45 minutes yet still before the uh, cake comes out of the oven, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, one thing I do have to do, as I said, is uh, dry this thing off or heat it up a little bit on the stove anyway. So let's get a view of our stove here. Oh, yeah. There he is. And no, he is not getting lye on him. Uh, I managed to keep the lye entirely on the paper, so there will not be any risk at all to uh, our friend Trouble there. Anyway, got a few things here that I've been working on as well. Um, last week, if you remember, one thing I pulled out of the lye was this a little bit of grit was this uh, favorite pan here, which has turned out very nicely after two coatings of seasoning. Yes, it does have a little bit of uh, sulfur pitting on at the bottom, unfortunately. Well, that, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about it. But the inside of this thing is, yeah, pretty darn glass smooth. So I am quite happy with how this turned out. Let me move this poiki to the back. Ugh. Yeah. Put the monarch on there. 
and just turn the heat up to maybe about three so that that will again evaporate any residual water in there here's another thing that i found at a flea market not brimfield but um at a, a local flea market the grafton flea market here in massachusetts this was a nice uh cast iron cauldron and in fact uh jamie's son pointed this one out for me and i snagged this thing here for 10 bucks despite the look i think this is actually modern made um my clue really is the way it actually was made with a gate mark, but they took the time to grind down and smooth out this gate mark here, all the way up to the sprue mark. Uh, also, these are not, these uh, legs here, I don't think they're shaped quite the way they used to do in the olden days. So I actually think this is more of a uh, modern day cauldron, but it's still a nice little pot, and I'm actually uh, quite proud of how this turned out. Uh, I have not had a chance to season this one yet from last week. This one, if you remember, is an old Wagner Sydney, a very old one, which is also unfortunately very warped. Um, but then again, I have friends who would still uh, take that anyway as it is. So things have uh, been going pretty good on, the, on that front there. I will say that definitely. So... <laughs> Uh, to find yours at an open market, great find. I, yeah, no, no question there. <laughs> Little cauldron came out nice, definitely. If nothing else. I mean, hey, with Halloween coming up, we've got ourselves a real uh, decoration here. And boy, this thing is heavy too. I mean, there's no question about it that, that this thing here is cast iron. Uh, it does bear a resemblance, I will say, to its big brother, the 15-gallon uh, cauldron. This one here, oh, I don't know. Probably takes maybe a pint, maybe even two pints. So, all right. Anyway, that's, um, as I said, my I'm actually, again, my agenda is uh, a little better off than I thought here. Uh, well, I suppose one thing I could do, now that we've done this, let's. I might as well just uh, try taking those other pans out of the lye and clean them off so that we have time here. I've been looking for a bunt cake pan. That one is a, that one is nice also. Yeah, the Lodge bunt pan, um, that, of course, was going on, God, has it been almost three years already? Yeah, apparently it has. Um, in 2018, in fact, Lodge finally re-released... As the first in their legacy series, they re-released the uh, their their uh, fluted cake pan. Oh, and by the way, I'm just starting to be able to smell that cake in the oven too. Mm -hmm. um, and the nice thing about that is the way it actually crashed the market for uh, antique vintage cake pans and bun pans. Why I'm saying it's a nice thing is because no vintage pans are not worthless. I don't think they're ever going to be worthless, but because no one and absolutely no one had made any new bunt pans at all since uh, probably at the very latest, the 1990s, uh, the bunt pans had become scarcer than hen's teeth. They were extremely rare and uh, could not be found uh, pretty much anywhere. And that means any cast iron bunt pan at all was selling on eBay at in, at incredible prices. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know how cast iron is overrated on or overpriced on eBay? Yeah, that especially was going for bunt pans. I mean, for instance, we're talking like people had a cracked and then welded bunt pan on eBay for going over $200 and more. So and then Lodge came out with their bunt pan, and that actually drove the price down because, well, now people actually had a choice. They could get a brand new bunt pan if all they wanted to do was bake in it. And of course, a lot of people did. So now, bunt pans, or well, for a while anyway, on uh, eBay and with other vendors, have been more reasonable. Now that the uh, cast, now that Lodge has discontinued again its fluted cake pan, they estimate it'll be gone for a few years or so. Uh, the prices of the bunt pans are starting to go up again, meaning that really now would be uh, the best. Well, actually, the best time to look was when Lodge was producing the bunt their uh, fluted cake pan. But now that that's gone, well, you can only expect prices will start rising again. So. 
uh papa dan missed an arc lodge number seven for ten ten dollars wow uh yesterday i saw it at a local marketplace and contacted owner she was at work and i had to wait until she got home she contacted me and said boyfriend sold it during the day ouch oh, my condolences and that is well unfortunately <laughs> that's how it goes would a sticky acid like uh ketchup or tomato paste help oh bunny pans going for 180 dollars and up and way up oh any suggestions for cleaning the exterior of a little enameled uh, danish dutch oven i'm using it as a deep fryer and i had flare-ups on the outside of it i don't want to use abrasives um somebody did suggest using a uh, tomato sauce there are in fact enamel cleaners that are safe enough i mean what um, there are a number of them even barkeeper's friend barkeeper's friend does have a more liquid or paste like um formula that's meant especially more for uh, more sensitive surfaces so that might be uh one thing to consider there <laughs> Uh, I have a favorite like that one, but the number seven is fat, like a uh, like a bubble number. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, I can only guess, and it must be, well, they were probably using a different mold in that case or a different pattern, so. Hmm. Um, and I kind of lost track of my thoughts. Oh, yeah, that's right, bunt pans. They are, of course, unfortunately going to be only become more expensive. There is one other alternative in regards to uh, bunt pans in that an Asian maker has, in fact, or did, in fact, for a while. I'm not sure if they're still doing it, but uh, they also jumped on the bandwagon and produced an Asian-made uh, cast iron cake pan in the shape of one of the vintage bunts. Similar to the Monarch that I have there, but not quite the same. And that has been selling at a uh, chain store down south, Agri Supply, which is kind of like Tractor Supply, but it's a, a different one, Agri, A-G-R-I Supply. And they have been selling that cake, that cast iron cake pan there for $25 plus shipping. So if you were in the area of an Agri, Agri Supply store, you may actually indeed be able to uh, score yourself a uh, cake, an Asian-made uh, cast iron cake pan. Of course, you get what you pay for, namely that the uh, surface of that cake pan is, is going to be a rough uh, sandpaper-like surface and not smooth like we have here, for instance. But um, as we've seen many times, that will not prevent you from actually doing some nice baking in it, and you can still do non-stick cakes even in a pan like that. At least one person on the uh, bunt, on the Cast Iron Bunt Bakers Anonymous group does, in fact, use one of those Asian-made uh, cake pans. So if you really, really want one and you feel that it would be worth paying $25 for, then I don't see any reason not to get it. Um... Other than that, well, then there is always the the hunt, you know, the hunt where, yeah, where, as I said, I made an incredible stroke of luck when I scored that thing at Brimfield, yes, and I cannot guarantee that it will happen to you, but you never know. I mean, on the other hand, if somebody as silly, as dumb as me could do it, who knows? Anybody could do it, so... Shadow uh, Walker XM, sorry I got carried away, meant to say hi, first my manners, oh, not to worry, hello, Shadow Walker XM, and um, Papa Dan, you are correct, that is the way it goes sometimes, I sat around the house all day with a $10 bill in my hand, didn't want to waste time grab grabbing the lodge and run, <laughs> maybe you should have, oh well, that's the way the Wookiee grumbles, unfortunately, <laughs> Do you have any tips on pointing out the older bunt pans versus the newer ones, which are being discontinued to be replaced with newer ones, etc.? cetera? Um, I, well, I can only get, say that a number of the older bunt pans actually do have gate marks on the bottom and, and sprue, S-P-R-U-E, marks. So they do actually look like they have little cracks, which are, hopefully, just gate marks. When I say hopefully, as I mentioned, there are a few, very, very few bunt pans out there that actually have been cracked. 
Um, also, there are bunt pans out there that are enameled as well. And in a lot of cases, I've seen the enamel is actually wearing off. And then, unfortunately, we have to uh, treat it like any other enameled cake pan. So that is uh, something to be considered as well. For that reason in particular, I would uh, not recommend an enameled uh, cast iron uh, bunt pan because they are all guaranteed to be uh, very old at this point. And it, it, there is even the possibility that the enamel could uh, start crazing and cracking. And so that's obviously something we don't want to do. Um, okay, like I said, having said all that, oops, let's spend, okay, we are at almost one hour now. Let's spend a little bit more time here. Um, let's move one or two of these things out of the way, and that would include this little cauldron here, this, uh, Wagner spinner, Yeah, well, it is, unfortunately, get this out of the way, and this favorite, which, again, I'm very happy with how this thing turned out, all things considered. And now that we have a little bit of room... Uh, let's do this right. One second, please. I just need to put this thing down in a safe place. After all, it is vintage. And I really want to be careful with it. All right. Um, let's, well, let's just go back to where we were, shall we? Which means, let's bring out the lie once again. So I guess I was lying earlier when I said I was all done and I was not going to be taking those things out of the lie. Yuck, yuck, yuck. <laughs> oh, well, again, that's the way it goes. So here we go again. Here we go. Let's give this a try. You had said that this flap here actually can tear off. And I will say again, I think this thing is actually helping to seal this thing a little better. So, at least for the time being, I'm going to keep this thing on here because I don't want to... Ugh. There we go. Which means, now that we've done that, let's get back again. Yeah. All right, that means let's bring out couple of other babies, shall we, including, which one was, which other one was I going to do? Oh yes, that's right. Here is the BSR, the BSR handwritten pan. There we go. Ugh. Yeah, definitely, unfortunately, it's like, yeah, I, I'm okay. I'll try that thing you said, namely that um, I will um, try turning that thing inside out and scrubbing it and seeing, in fact, if I if there is a leak in that thing or not. However, let's get back to the sink again and let's see how well or how terrible. Okay, let's put a little bit more of this vinegar on. Because this stuff actually works pretty good. There we go. Much, much better. And having done that, let's actually put a little bit of vinegar right in the pan, shall we? There we go. Only a little bit, mind you. Just to be, just to be sure things are nice and safe. And with that, let's start scrubbing. As you can see, I'm not even using soap on this thing. However, I would say that a lot of this grit is coming off pretty nicely. So far, so good. Some of the edges are 
maybe a little questionable yet, unfortunately, in that there's still some residue on this thing. And I might actually drop this back into the live for at least a couple more days. However, this thing here is looking pretty good, I would say. Once again, especially for a pan that could very well be anywhere from 90 to 100 years old. So, we'll leave that aside. And let's go for another one. And this time I'm going to use the other glove. I'm not going to use the left glove this time. I'm using the right glove, which hopefully will be the right glove. Let's bring this down. Here it is. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot how heavy this thing is. Look, this one looks like it's all ready to go, practically. And this, again, is the ugly hammered. So let's get this one to the sink. Very carefully. Start scrubbing this thing, shall we? All right. Yeah, look at this coming right off. We're doing very well here. Man, this is heavy. This, this ugly eight is most definitely heavier than a number eight lodge. And, and we have heard people talking about how heavy and thick lodge pans are. Well, this, let me move this mic a little closer again. And I can only say is even heavier. It's still on this side. Of course, this thing is so thick and heavy, you can only imagine what it would take to warp this thing. This thing is definitely flat, it sits flat, and it is absolutely not a spinner. There you go, looks like, I think. Move this out of the way. In fact, this will go back in the lie right now. This is the BSR. Very carefully. Plop. Hmm. Let me rearrange that a little bit. Ugh. Come on. There we go. There we go. That's good. Forget what else was in there. All right. Let's get this off. Get this out of here. Move this over a little bit. Just a little bit of Dawn dish detergent. Nothing fancy. And then after this, we will return to your comments again. Um, yeah, we might very well cut this off before 9.30. I mean, I, no, I'd like to see the reveal, of course. But even then, we're going to have to wait another... 20 minutes or so for it to actually, uh, you know, come out of the pan. So I really don't want to bore anyone, as, as you might say. Still, this again is turning out rather nicely. Again, there's a rumor, unverified. That most of the that a number of these unknown mystery skillets, like the Ugly Hammered series or the Southern Mystery Skillet series, rumor has it that they were made by prison labor. But there is unfortunately no documentation that verifies whether this is true or false. So all we can do is speculate, I'm afraid. Uh, steel wool is softer than cast iron, so fortunately. Unlike using, say, a wire wheel, I'm not w too worried about uh, scratching the surface of this thing. There we go. Let's clean, this, clean all this off right now. Um, this is nice enough that once it's seasoned, it may very well could make a Christmas present. Because look at this, we've got ourselves a nice, ugly, not so ugly, hammered pan here. 
All I need to do now, like before, is clean this thing up and coat it with grease. So let's do that as quickly as we can. Ah. Having said that, let me ask a question as well. Uh, what do you like with pumpkin spice and what do you not like with pumpkin spice? I mean, after all, as again, the title goes, we, we have pumpkin spice everywhere. So huh. there are some things that I have indeed enjoyed at pumpkin with pumpkin spice, things like donuts or cakes uh, or the like. And yet at the same time, there are some ridiculous pumpkin spice out there that I would rather not try. I'm going to pass thank you on the pumpkin spice rice krispies. No offense to anybody. So far, so good. Oh, I see. That's not grit. Apparently, it looks like this might actually be a casting flaw or, or even some kind of, I shouldn't say corrosion, but something actually is making, is the side of this is actually a little bit rough. Of course, it might even be because of the casting itself. I mean, there's a reason why these things are called ugly hammered, not because they're ugly, but because they do look very primitive, and there's no denying that. So, let's get that rag with the Crisco one last time and coat this. I might actually call it a night perhaps because things are things have been going pretty good and as you saw the bunt pan is now out of the lye and it is uh, resting there on the stove and I am going to be seasoning that over the next couple of days. And then we will really put it through its paces and have some fun. And boy, is that going to be fun. There we go. Nice brisk coating here of the Crisco, including the sides. You have to remember the sides. Ah, so far, so good. Oh, yeah. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Really, really rub it in. I hate to rub it in. No, actually, I love to rub it in. It's the same way with internet arguments, too. Okay. Getting all that, and there we are. Looks like that means this thing here is ready to be seasoned. So this number eight is going to go with the number five and the number three. This is what I mean by crude. Look at this. The number eight is not even even. Um, let me do this right. There we are. You can see it's actually a little bit tilted to the side of this thing. So whoever did the molder pattern for this, <laughs> Yeah, this is again why we call it, why we say this thing looks pretty crude. Crude or not, though, it's got a very nice and very smooth cooking surface. So whoever gets this is not going to regret it. I'm certain about that. Why don't I keep it? Well, I mean, look how many number eights I already have and I'm trying to use. So <laughs> I really have to tell myself that. All right, let's move this back away. Again, folks. There we are. So actually, I made a little bit more progress than expected by finishing up this ugly as well. There we are. Now that one is going as well. All right, let's check in our comments once again. Strong's Adventures, I have to run. Y'all have a good evening. Uh, night String, he got all correct. <laughs> hope they aren't sick. They haven't been around neither. Oh, yeah, that's, um, well, I do hope everything, yeah, like uh, Bookworm 73, Jessica T or Miss French Twist. Well, Bookworm 73, I, he has uh, left the channel, I'm afraid. He and I had a little bit of an argument, and I'm not going to uh, get into that. Thank you. Uh, what do you think about the cast iron line that Bed Bath & Beyond is selling? The brand is our table. Well, I would say they're, pro they're pretty much the same as a number of uh, cast iron pans that are being sold. I mean, they are absolutely Asian-made. 
because Lodge is really the only major cast iron manufacturer left in the U.S. Um, and I'm sure, even without looking, I would bet that the uh, shape of the pan is probably not dissimilar from what you might see from Lodge. <laughs> hint, hint, hint. And if you feel you can get a good price for one of those, well, I would say pick it up and give it a try. So, thank you for giving us so many updated videos. Well, okay, did you frequent any old school diners along the way? Uh, I have to be honest, not too many, I'm sorry to say. And, uh, and that's one thing I really do need to do more of, regardless. Orange Bucket now has a BSR number 5 and one Asian lid in it. Yes, definitely. I will remember that when I look in, in there again, like, say, by the weekend or so. Looks like another fine mess. And Hammered, uh, isn't Hammered a Chicago pet? Well, actually, the understanding is no. Chicago Hardware Foundry is not the same as these ugly Hammered pans. The, des the Hammered design on a Chicago Hardware uh, foundry pan is much more elaborate. It looks, well, it looks, frankly, much, much more professionally done. If you do look up a CHF or Chicago Hardware Foundry hammered pan, you will see again, there are many, many, many more hammer marks on it. They are much closer together. It does, it really has a very nice um, pattern on it as opposed to what we see here that makes it look as though it might have been beaten with a hammer. So, what do you use to clean the interior of your oven? Well, when I actually clean it, I'm going to use Easy Off Oven Cleaner, the yellow uh, can, which has, surprise, surprise, lye in it. <laughs> so, oh, and when I do, though, I'm going to make sure that the cats are well out of the way. So, uh, yeah, we have to be careful of that, unfortunately, when using that stuff, I'm sorry to say. So, <laughs> uh, there are a bunch of old school diners on the eastern seaboard of, of eastern Pennsylvania, all the way down to at least Baltimore. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's one of the areas that I have not really been to, the eastern seaboard, unfortunately. The best I've done there is Route 95. I've not gotten any closer to the ocean there yet. Your opinion why CHF put in either an eight or nine before pan size. Well, that must be how they set up their uh, identification of their, uh, of their molds in much the same way that BSR had their particular patterns, namely that they had a, let a size number and then a letter for the mold. I'm thinking that's probably why Chicago Hardware Foundry did that. And in fact, it may very well be that the eight or nine may have been because of the fact that they were producing more than cast iron cookware. They were producing things like stoves in those days. So you figure eight or nine, that might very well be have been just the um, meaning that part number eight, which would have been a skillet, or part number nine, which might have been a chicken fryer or a Dutch oven, perhaps. Um, so that is my guess, anyway, and there's really no way, no way to know, so... <laughs> Um, going on at this point, as I said, I'll probably be checking this in, uh, checking on the cake in about 15 minutes or so. Um, nonetheless, we could either uh, go on or call it a night because it is a Wednesday. So, um, and if nothing else, I can, I will uh, reassure you as well that I'm going to be working on at least a couple more videos uh, over the weekend. Uh, as I mentioned, I made bunny chow last night and I filmed it and we're going to be having an, and I hope to have a nice, uh, video of uh, really doing authentic African style bunny chow, hopefully within the next day or two. Uh, Glock 30 pan, do you have an opinion about the three section breakfast pans? Actually useful or just cool? I myself have not been attracted to those. Um, I am more of the just cool looking school myself. I might disagree if I had kids and I was had to uh, cook breakfast for kids uh, every day for 18 years or so. But myself, I have never felt the urge to get one of those segmented uh, breakfast pans, whether it's BSR or Lodge or Griswold or uh, Wagner. So that's just me personally though and i no way am i going to speak for anyone else so um where do you what do you think of cajun classic i know it's asian is there anything you recommended well the same i would say 
same reason as you can do with any Asian made cast iron. It is still great for cooking. And there's no, if you really want something that is that where just so that you can do some cooking, there is no reason not to. Cajun Classic, along with maybe Bayou Classic, and I think there's one other, maybe Cajun Cooker, they also make a number of pans that simply have never been made by Lodge or American pans, especially things like those huge, gigantic jambalaya pots, aka cauldrons, that they, uh, you know, that, uh, that, they, uh, that they usually sell brand new, so... Uh, Born Engineer, it's my first time on the live stream. I've been enjoying your content. Well, thank you very much and welcome. I do hope you've um, in enjoyed this tonight. It's been kind of laid back tonight. I am still very much have enjoyed myself, though. And anyway, as you can see, we've accomplished a couple of things. I mean, after all, one last time, uh, besides, preparing a, besides preparing a cake, we've got a uh, cast iron cake pan here that's heating up. I can probably even turn off the heat at this point because this thing is definitely dry by now. And as bonus as well, we got we have ourselves a uh, number eight uh, ugly hammered skillet, which I'm definitely looking forward to cleaning this thing up as well. Um, that, I guess, brings me to another point in that, yeah, I have finally agreed that uh, in the near future, when a number of these pans are uh, cleaned up and seasoned, I will start doing giveaways here on the uh, li on the uh, live chat. First of all, to help keep my collection from getting too big, and also hopefully to kind of like increase my viewership as well. So I mean, I enjoy this, but I yeah, but I wouldn't mind growing either. So. <laughs> uh, Donut Twenty Three Stewart, I am new to cast iron couture. I have a BSR cornbread skillet. Can you, uh, did you possibly say in another video that they are hard to find? Um, BSR cornbread skillets. Oh, I see. You mean the round one. Um, not especially hard to find. They made a lot of them, yes. So um, the ones that are hard to find are the number three size six wedge cornbread skillet, which is smaller than the eight wedge one that we see uh, just about everywhere, and which is also the one being sold by uh, by Lodge as well. The six wedge uh, cornbread skillet is indeed harder to find. They only produce those for a few years, from the 60s to the early 70s or so, and then discontinued them. Uh, the other one that is hard to find from BSR is the Handy Dan corn stick pan. Let me uh, take that one down. <laughs> and show you because yeah i managed to score one for christmas uh, a couple of years ago so and um let me move this over a little bit this is the handy dan corn stick pan with a handle on it and it is really really nice for making cornbread uh sticks or other kind of sticks as well it has eight uh, corn sticks rather than seven. And yes, this handle is extremely useful. BSR produced this in the last few years of, it, of its existence, from the early 80s to the early 90s, before they went out of business. So there are really not too many of these things out there. And so yet again, antique vendors are scooping these things up and really doing their best to try to uh, rip you off and get these things at, and sell you these things at high prices. But if you manage to come across one at a decent price, and if you like baking cornbread in these things or in, or cakes or anything else, I would highly recommend it. All right, let me put this thing back as well. Okay. There we are, putting it back in its place. And having said that, Welcome to our group, uh, Born uh, Engineer. Uh, I am new to cast iron. Yeah, did they make a lid for the ugly number eight? I'm not sure. Uh, I do know that I've seen ugly hammered Dutch ovens that definitely have lids, and the lids look pretty crude as well, so they certainly match. I also came across one instance where there was a number eight Dutch oven and number eight ugly hammered lid, presumably the same manufacturer, and the lid did not fit. There was, it just was just very slightly either too big or too small, but it did not fit. 
So it might be that may have actually been a skillet lid that they had set on a Dutch oven, perhaps. So the answer to that is maybe. Did they make a lid for the ugly number eight? Maybe. Uh, more research is needed, at least on my end. <laughs> Okay, Handy Dan isn't completely in camera view. It's not? Oh, I'm sorry. Let me bring that back out again. My apologies. Let me do this one more time. There we are. This is the Handy Dan corn stick pan. And there is the back. With a 74H marker, every single one has the same number because they only used one mold on it. So again, this is the eight stick Handy Dan corn stick pan with a very unique handle. Hope that helps. All right. Gotta be careful here. There are sharp things in this kitchen here. Gotta watch where I stick my hand. Oh, rat. Sorry, one second, one second, folks. There we go. Did not want that corn stick pan to fall down. <laughs> All right. Um, Turbo Graphics. I have a 12 inch Erie. I'm worried about damaging it. Other than dropping it and neglecting it, are there dangers? Um, well, like you said, dropping it and neglecting it. Are probably the biggest dangers. Um, the other might be heat and cold shock. There have been rare instances, as folks have heard, where a cast iron pan just suddenly spontaneously cracks or splits, and that's never fun. And the best I could say in that case is that that uh, flaw in the pan must have been there from the beginning. But repeated exposures to hot and cold and hot and cold and hot and cold eventually expanded it to the point where it split. Now, this is an extremely rare occurrence, and I would still encourage cooking in that 12-inch Erie if you feel that it's safe. But nothing, it, I mean, cast iron is not indestructible. I guess that's the best I could say. I use it to blacken fish, was worried about heat maybe. I would say keep on doing that then. Um, just don't blast your oven at its extreme highest heat, especially if you have an electric stove. Um, at most, I would really want to heat this pan low and slow, like maybe at medium or a little bit more than medium heat. And even that in itself, if you let it sit at that heat for maybe about 15 minutes or 10 to 15 minutes, even that is hot enough to give a decent sear to a steak or in this case as you say blacken some fish so that would probably be the only thing don't blast your oven with that you know that cast iron pan is very rare very valuable and fragile as far as cast iron goes so treat it like that um i'm hoping okay thanks appreciate it well well again i'm more than happy to help and i do hope that does help it is now 9.25. You know what? I think let's make an attempt at taking out that cake. So first thing I have to do is put the lid back on this lie tank. You know, just to be safe. There. Now that's on nice and tight. Yay. Okay. Well, thank you everybody for waiting this long. Tonight's seasoning is looking very good sitting there on your stove. You know, great for a first coat. Yeah, this isn't even seasoning. This is, again, what I'm really doing is just giving it a coating to prevent oxidation, aka flash rust. It will go into the oven, and then uh, we will do some real seasoning. However, let's clear off some of this mess, shall we? That means this, again, this Wagner here. Get this out of the way. And the other thing is this, um, again, here was the mixing bowl where we mixed the batter. We will get that out of the way. And a little bit of batter, which I'm just rinsing off as, as I am. There we go. And now 
comes the moment where I hope everything uh, is ready. Let's. Well, we're about to find out. Let's, yeah, let's get this in a little bit closer if possible. Wish I know that is really what everybody has been waiting for. And thank you for your patience, everyone. There we go. Let's pull this in. There we go. Okay, that. There we go. Now we've got a fairly decent view. And at last, here comes. Well, this is not exactly the moment of truth. The moment of truth comes when we flip it in about 20 minutes or so. But this is going to be just about as good. Yes, indeed. Because here it comes. Ooh. Wow, look at this thing. Offering. <laughs> How about that, folks? That is a nice looking cake, if I may say so. And I hope you don't mind me saying that. So, now, guess what we do now, as you say, is ye old toothpick. Actually, for something this deep, I probably should get a... I think you need to identify it. What? You think so? Absolutely. Well, the least I can do is the toothpick nonetheless. Yeah. All right. So let's see what we have. Quick. Done. Done. There you go. I think you called it. Mm -hmm. So we are off to a good start I here. I smell it. Oh, yes. Which reminds me, the time right now is 9.27. That means in 20 minutes at 9.47, we get to flip it. Oops. Great. I think this uh, thing just came out. Let me put this back in. Sorry about that. I hope the connection didn't freeze up just then. <laughs> yeah, I can smell it too, says Pip Gorn. <laughs> I have a Martin Stoven range with an ugly number eight. It's also off center and uh, sloppy looking. And I'll bet it is still a fantastic cooker. So huh, I'm sure you are enjoying the heck out of it. And uh, congratulations on having a Martin. No arguments at all there. But look at that, folks. Here we go. Pumpkin spice everywhere, even here in my kitchen. So, You're so basic. Uh, Shadow Walker XM, I've had my first ever cast iron pan laterally, laterally, oh, literally explode while using it. Uh, sounded like a gun in the room. Yeah, I've heard of that happening before. So, I mean, that is like a freak occurrence, and it's really hard to say when, if, when that may ever happen. So, have you ever cooked eggs and bacon I had in Massachusetts? Oh, yes, I have. Oh, in maple syrup. Uh, no, I have not cooked them in maple syrup. Uh, that sounds like yet another thing. I'll have to give it a try. I've cooked bacon in maple syrup. Oh, Jamie says she's cooked bacon in maple syrup. So, all right. Nonetheless, there we go. We do a little video on it. Hey, that sounds good. A oh, video on flipping it. Yeah, I will. I will do that. I will uh, do a little mini video and record uh, the actual flipping, because that's yeah, that's the thing about flipping these things. Whenever they're successful, and uh, usually not always, but usually they are. Whenever I'm able to successfully this thing flip these things, I always have to shout out in joy. Ha ha! It's like a reflex thing. So yeah, I definitely want to show everybody what happens when this when this cake comes out of the pan, and boy, am I looking forward to that. Nonetheless, there we are in a large cast iron bunt pan. While meanwhile, sitting next to it, let me move that over. While sitting next to it is a much older cast iron cake pan which I am also looking forward to. The first pan one in this is not going to be a chocolate spice cake. I mean, a pumpkin spice cake. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but yeah, you better believe I'll be christening the monarch here with chocolate. And having said that, I think we are uh, doing just about, I think we, I think I would like to call this an evening because, hey, it is 930 and I can only appreciate very much everybody who has uh, shown up here. And in fact, the viewer count is still rising. It was 39, then it was 40, 41, now 40 again, <laughs> which sounds like a cue again that I think uh, we should be all set here. 
Good night, Papa Dan. Night, everyone. See you all next week. I'm definitely looking forward to that. We will see what happens next week um, when this, this cake pan is definitely going to be ready. And having said that, I guess, as always, let's uh, go on and uh, enjoy the rest of the evening. And as always, take care of yourself, folks. Have a good evening, everybody. See you next Wednesday. There we go. We're done.